Hi guys, this is Vasugi from Arn Academy. Today we are going to discuss the tools that are employed in recombinant DNA technology. Tools were restriction endonuclease, DNA ligase, cloning vectors, DNA polymerase and the host organism. Out of these, we are going to describe only the restriction enzyme, cloning vector and the host organism. After quadrating the DNA with restriction enzyme, we are going to separate and isolate the gene of interest. And within the cloning vector, we are going to see its, some of its features such as origin of replication, selectable marker, cloning sites and the vectors needed for cloning the genes. So in the year of 1963, and two enzymes were extracted from S. Richa coli, one of which is added to the metal group of DNA and the another is specialized in cutting the DNA at specific sites and it is called a restriction endonucleus. The first ever enzyme discovered was HIN2 and it can recognize the 6 base pair which is a recognition sequence of this HIN2. So the naming convention usually follows. The first letter of the enzyme will be from the gene and second two letters will be taken from the species name. And all these belong to a large class of enzyme called nucleus. It is of two types, exonucleus and endonucleus. Exonucleus removes the nucleotides from the end of the DNA sequence and endonucleus cuts the DNA at specific uh, sites. So, so far 900 enzymes have been extracted from 230 strains. So how these restriction enzymes actually cut the DNA? So these restriction enzymes will be moving along the length of the DNA and it will search for a specific recognition sequence. Uh, one th Such a sequence is called a palindromic nucleotide sequence. So once it uh, finds a sequence, it will break the sugar phosphate bonds found in the uh, double helix of the DNA. So it leads in the formation of a sticky ends and it is due to the formation of a hydrogen bonds. And this diagram could depict the action of restriction enzyme. So this is a foreign DNA and when it is subjected to the restriction endonucleus, it will cut the DNA at a particular site. And this is a diagram which depicts the ABO process. That is, this is a recognition sequence when ECO R1 will come across this sequence, it will cut the DNA leaving the sticky ends at so that the complementary strands can ligate it with this. Now the separation of DNA fragments after treatment with the restriction endonucleus all these uh, DNA fragments uh, have to get separated. For this purpose we employ gel electrophoresis uh, under the, the electric matrix. So as DNA is a negatively charged molecule it will be moving toward the positive electrode or the anode. So the agarose is a polymer that is employed here which is actually extracted from the seaweed. We, here a sieving effect is employed uh, mainly to separate the DNA according to their size. So uh, if the DNA size is very small they will be moving uh, as farther as can and, um, and we cannot see the pure DNA as it is not uh, visible to the light. So these fragments were subjected to a process called staining where it is treated with atm bromide. Uh, it is followed by UV radiation treatment. As a result of these kinds of process, uh, the DNA fragments will be turning into a bright orange color. The ABO process is called as an illusion. So cloning vectors. Vectors uh, usually used to wear plasmids and bacteriophages. So these plasmids are um, a circular DNA that is found in the bacterial cell. Uh, the reason for employing these two as a vector is they have the ability to replicate among themselves uh, which is lacked in the normal human DNAs. So these plasmids will be 1 to 2 or 15 to 100 purpose per cell and uh, bacteriophages will be huge in number. Uh, we are going to discuss some of the properties of the uh, cloning vectors. The first one is uh, origin of replication. It is a sequence where the replication starts and uh, if we want our alien DNA to get replicate, we have to attach that to this uh, origin of replication uh, so that it can replicate and uh, it also holds another factor of uh, uh, controlling the copies of the foreign DNAs. And uh, now the second one is the selectable marker. 
Uh, this is mainly to distinguish between the transformed and the non-transformed cells. Uh, transformation is, a, uh, is actually the process when the foreign DNA is ligated with the vector. So uh, it will eliminate the non-transformed cells and it helps the growth of the transformed cells. So the selectable markers employed were ampicillin and uh, chloramphenicol, tetracycline and canamycin. So now the cloning sites, uh, uh, for a DNA to get ligated, a very few recognition sites should be available. So if more than one recognition sites are available, then it will complicate the cloning process. Um, and then one and the DNA have to be ligated with one of the and one, one of the two antibiotic resistance. So it will be a tough process. An alternative selectable marker uh, would be it, uh, which can distinguish and differentiate based according to the ability to produce color in when subjected to the chromogenic substrate. So an RDNA will be inserted into the A galacto, uh, galactosidase. This will activate the enzyme. Uh, this process is called insertional inactivation as a result of this process. Um, if it gives a blue color strains then if uh, there is no rdna and uh, if the strain doesn't resemble any of the colors then the rdna cells are present in that strains so now the vectors for cloning the genes in plants and animals so agrobacterium fumifacients is employed in case of a plant cell and retroviruses in case of an uh, uh, animal cell so um, agrobacterium fumifacients are responsible for creating a tumorous growth, a disease called crown gall within a sunflower, um, brinjal and tomato crops. So um, the main reason is the TI plasmid that is available within this strain uh, that is responsible for the cancerous growth. So if we remove that uh, TI plasmid, so that a foreign DNA or gene of interest can be inserted to that um, agrobacterium strain. So the resultant recombinant DNA, that is a removal of TI plasmid and the insertion of foreign gene interest in that place, uh, that uh, resulting DNA is called tDNA. So this tDNA will doesn't cause any cancerous growth. And at the same time, uh, retroviruses, these retroviruses will cause cancerous growth in the animals. As the above process, uh, it can uh, the cancer causing uh, plasmid can be replaced to eat, to get a better yield. And this is the um, diagram of a pl typical plasmid. So this is the origin of replication. This is a place where the alien DNA have to be linked so that it can replicate. And this is a selectable market. And now. This is a restriction size between that is two antibiotic resistance so that this is a restriction site and the inserted gene. So competent host we have so we have formed a recombinant DNA. Now we have to insert this RDNA cells into a host organism. Since DNA being a hydrophilic molecule, the host organism uh, cell membrane have to be permeable to permit the entry of uh, this RDNA into that cell. So we have to treat that with a divalent cation that is uh, most probably calcium chloride. Or uh, And uh, it can be done by incubating the cells with RDNA on ice followed by treating with 42 degrees Celsius and uh, again treating with ice. So by these techniques uh, the host cell can take the RDNA. And the another process is called microinjection that is uh, directly injecting the RDNA cells into the host organism. And the another one is biolistic or gene gun where the RDNA cells are coated with the gold or tungsten so that it can directly enter into the uh, host cell. This is usually done on a disarmed pathogen for um, pathogen vectors for transferring the RDNA into the host cell. So that's it. If you have any suggestions and feedback, please let me know in the comment section. Thank you.